So today I'm going to show you how I usually work with Lightroom and Photoshop in terms of uh, culling through the images from each photo shoot and how I do the basic lighting corrections in Lightroom and then get on to the more exciting dramatic edits in Photoshop. So the first thing is I'm going to open up the images that I just took from the last shoot that I did and I'm just going to go through each every each and every image and it kind of does look like I shot the same thing over and over again but I swear there's tiny differences among each photo so I kind of just go through them one by one and the first few I'm saying no to because they just kind of look a little too topsy-turvy for me I'm looking for something that's a little bit straighter So I'm trying to decide between these two that look a little bit straighter compared to the others. These are all kind of, even to me, they're starting to look the same, to be honest. So I'm kind of just going through them one by one. I do remember that as time went on and I was trying to work with this arrangement, I used more sticky tacks so that everything was kind of held in place better. So it did kind of get more straightened out towards the end. kind of reminds me of like when you're at the eye doctor and you're like you know at the optometrist and they're like oh option a or option b and you like literally see no difference and so i'm going to repeat the process with each um different setup trying to find the best image within each group so this is the second shot setup that i did with some eucalyptus and stone slabs Playing around different arrangements of the eucalyptus. And this was one where, again, most of the images look the same, but it's really about the shadow placement in the back. And then this one too, which is kind of playing with different options of depth of field with the placement of the products. This one is pretty straightforward, so yeah, easy to, in this one as well. Yeah, these last few are more straightforward. Okay, so now to the edits in Lightroom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I usually go to uh, cropping to straighten out the image and to create a crop that I like. So I'm gonna crop this in a little bit more and that got rid of the black space on the side so that's, you know, that saves me an edit later on. So that's good. And then I do basic adjustments with like exposure, contrast. Like I kind of just go down the list. So brighten up a little bit, bring up the shadows, uh, darken the blacks just to give it a little bit more drama. Uh, for this brand, we tend to like very dramatic, darker shadows and brighter highlights almost as if the products were out in like a really direct sunlight on a really summery hot afternoon it's got like a really warm quality to it so i'm just playing around with the different toggles for the shadows highlights whites and blacks and i don't really touch much else um, for product photos and product photos only i up the clarity just slightly and then because i'm shooting on a crop sensor camera i like to do the profile corrections and even though it's a studio i'm just going to remove the chromatic aberration yeah <laughs> blanked out for a long second there 
So those are like the basic edits that I do. I don't do anything crazy with like colors or, you know, especially since I, these are product photos and I want the colors to stay true to the packaging and to the, the serums and the creams and things that are in the bottles. I usually save the format as a TIFF format and that's the format I use to bring into Photoshop to do the edits later on. So for each, how I have it organized is that each company or brand that I work with has their own folder. And within that, I will do a different edits folder for each photo shoot. So I've saved this one there and I'm just gonna repeat the process for the rest of the images that I've picked. And I don't always, uh, even though a lot of these are shot with like really similar lighting setup, I don't usually always just do apply previous settings to each photo because I find that the effect of the photo that I want is so different from all the others that I kind of just edit each one by itself or I definitely need to make tweaks for each one individually just to give it just to set it apart from all the other photos if that makes sense to give it its own characteristic but i do apply the same basic edits in terms of like the cropping and all that else and now i've just opened up probably one of my favorite images from the shoot i love the simplicity of it and the drama of it um, and I'm going to show you, kind of like walk you through how I would edit this image in Photoshop. So the first thing I do is I always make a copy of the layer because you want to keep one copy pristine exactly how it was when you opened it in case something happens with the editing. You always have like the safe original uh, image that you started from always available. And the first thing I do after I make that copy, even though I've made absolutely no edits so far, is I'm gonna save it as a Photoshop file. And that way it saves all the layers. So I have like a record of everything that I've done and I can make any adjustments that I want later on or apply them to other photos. So it's really just a matter of me playing around with adjustment layers. That's mostly what I rely on for editing. So as I'm waiting for that to save, I'm gonna go to adjustment layers. And the first thing I do is usually just uh, curves. And I usually begin with like a very subtle, simple, straightforward like S curve, which really like lightens the highlights and darkens the shadows just to give it more contrast and drama overall, which I love and is really awesome for this brand. So I do kind of like, you know, just kind of playing around with the, the graph and the line trying to make it more dramatic or more subtle, see what um, what ends up with the effect that I, that I like. So I'm kind of going something somewhere in between, maybe a little bit more towards the subtle S-curve side. Because I don't, I think once you have too much contrast, it starts to look like there's a filter on it or that it's like over edited or just kind of amateur, to be honest. I, I remember I definitely made that mistake. I thought when, when I first started out doing photography, I thought the more contrast that image had, the more like high end and editorial it would look. But I think it just made me look like an amateur, <laughs> definitely. So just keep adjusting, making like the tiniest adjustments on the curve make the biggest difference. So I'm trying to always toggle like before and after I've, I've added the adjustment layer just to see if I like the change that I've made to it. So I love, love using gradients. It's a great way to add kind of like an artistic flair to the photos. But for me, especially for this brand, I use it mostly to enhance the shadows and the highlights. So in this case, there's already some shade 
or darkness on the lower left corner and I'm just gonna kind of enhance that by creating a colored gradient and then like darkening it with the effect later on so I usually choose a pretty neutral color that's like similar to the background color adjust the angle of it and then I'm gonna go to blending mode and I'm gonna do I usually do either like linear burn or color burn sometimes multiply which I guess is what I'm going with and then toggle the opacity just to see how dramatic I want it to look and I'm not loving the multiply so let's go with color burn that does look a little bit better so I'm gonna keep that for now and then because I did a shadow it makes sense to do a highlight as well so again like sticking with a neutral color uh, I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter because it's in highlight but you could basically do any color and it will work as a highlight even if you did something that was more of a mid-tone and for highlights I usually go to lighten or screen is a good option as well but it's fun to play around with like the other the other options and see what they have so right now I'm gonna go with screen uh, playing around with the opacity usually for the highlights uh, they're a little bit more dramatic so I tend to go with a lower opacity than I would for the gradients that are enhancing the shadows so again this is just like it's very subtle very subtle changes And keeping all the colors and everything soft and neutral so adding another adjustment layer here i like to do black and white and then do the blending mode of soft light because it kind of just gives it a little bit of desaturation and again kind of like intensifies the contrast and I, I rarely, for each adjustment layer, like I rarely leave it at 100% opacity. It's always like, you know, pretty minimal. So sometimes to soften up the image, what I've been doing lately is I've been doing a solid color adjustment layer and then doing a blending mode of like either overlay or soft light. It just kind of gives it like a soft aura to the image without really obscuring it that much. So it's been really nice, especially for beauty products, uh, doing shoots or beauty products because you kind of want them to have like, you know, that very soft glowy effect similar to what the product would do for your skin and there's like kind of a nice soft feminine quality about it as well so now i think i'm pretty happy with the adjustment layers that I have and how the image is looking overall so I'm going to save everything so I don't lose any of the work that I've done and then the next step would be for me to do the actual retouching so I'm going to clean up the jar a little bit and make it like fill it up with the contents a bit more there's some gaps in there so I'm gonna just smooth everything out so it looks more solid. And for that, I'm using the healing brush, which is really easy. You just brush it over whatever you want to fix and it just does it all for you. So there's no really like special tricks or anything. I mean, there's definitely multiple ways to edit uh, but because I have such a high volume of work, I tend to go for whatever is the fastest and the easiest. So I'm trying to get in between the, the letters here. 
it's hard too with beauty products or skincare products sometimes because the liquids will kind of separate or shift around um so those are things you kind of have to look out for when you're retouching And sometimes when the healing brush just doesn't do it, I go for the clone stamp tool instead just to clean up some things, especially when it comes to edges. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing with the blocks, go over them with the healing brush just to smooth it out. I'm using foam blocks and ideally I would be using wood ones, but I can't really afford them right now so the foam blocks are, are great for now but they tend to dent really easily so I'm just kind of covering up all of those marks in post-production So here I'm trying to take a little bit of a shortcut. Instead of just like going over all the blemishes, I'm gonna try to see if I can blur the whole panel and blend it. Probably not the greatest idea, but let's see. Shortcuts, you know, honestly very rarely work when you're doing um, photo edits. Yeah, that didn't work out, so I'm not I'm not gonna go with that. I am just gonna go back to the good old healing brush and not be lazy. So I'm zooming back out to see how it looks overall, and I'm overall pretty pleased with that. So I'm gonna save it once more, because I'm always paranoid that something's gonna happen to my computer, and I'm gonna lose all my work. And again, I'm just, you know, I keep on saving the PDF file for now, and I will save a JPEG um, afterwards. And that is the file format that I deliver to the clients. So now that the Photoshop file is saved, I'm gonna do the JPEG version. My computer is really slow. Yeah, and so once that saves, there you go. I'm done with this image, and that's pretty much kind of like my approach. Every image is going to have a different edit to it. So this is definitely the most fun part for me.